All right, let's take a quick look at uh, controlling density in Grobato. We have some nice tools that allow you to control density globally uh, and distribute it based on the size of the objects. Uh, but we also have the ability to isolate objects and control their density individually and, and even kind of a, a mix of the two. So the, 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 the full range of control is really there. It all starts here, of course, in the output panel where you'll see uh, three different flavors of uh, density. The simplest one, of course, is fixed density, fixed circumference. And that simply means that all objects, regardless of their size, get the same number of divisions uh, around the equator, if you will, like in the case of these spheres. But we also have uh, object size modulated and object size proportional. So let's take a look at fixed. And you can see every sphere here, regardless of size, has the same number of divisions. And that's fine. In some cases, it might actually be uh, all you need. Um, you know, you're getting the same level of faceting along the edge of, of the spheres, no matter what their size. Uh, but you're getting, you know, very different sized polygons in your model. You know, some very big ones and some very small ones. And you may not need all that density on small objects, for example, or you may need more or want more on your larger objects. So. That's what these modulated and, and proportional things are about. If we switch to modulated, you can see that what has happened here is that um, the density of the middle size sphere is about the same. Uh, the density is higher on the, on the large sphere. Its um, polygons are still larger, but it's started to move in, in the direction uh, of polygon size of, of the middle sphere. And, and same thing with the smallest one there. So. Um, and the idea here, the basic idea with this, is that you have a key object. You, know, you have an object around which this variation of size pivots. So when we use uh, object size modulated or proportional, we need to tell Grobato uh, which object we want to be that pivot point, that key object. And there are a couple of different ways to do that. Um, let's take a look at the mesh again. We can see that the Spheres value, global value is 32. We'll get to those values in the object panel in just a second. But um, it became the key object because I used either that button or um, the right click uh, context menu. You've got to click on an object here. Um, that allows me to base the key density on an object size, a particular object size, any object I click on. Um, that value didn't change there because I'd already done this once before, but let's say I were to. Uh, go up here to the smallest sphere and you'll notice that value changed. So we'll go back to the uh, medium sized sphere and use that as our pivot point, our key object. So you know we, we, we had to choose that manually because it, it uh, we don't know we don't want to go by something as simple as like an average because uh, it just may be very dependent upon what roles different objects play in your model and then you're seeing. Um, now I'm going to select some objects and you'll notice over here in the object panel that you see the set density to global value button. It reflects, the value that shows up in there reflects what Roboto will set that value to given our current settings. But before we get into the details of the object panel, let's look at this uh, one remaining method which is uh, proportional, varied, object size proportional. And um, if we go ahead and generate the mesh with that, what you'll see is that Grobato is endeavoring to keep all the polygon sizes the same. Uh, that may not be obvious when you first look on this yet. You have to uh, kind of ignore the caps because of the special treatment of polygons up there. But uh, if you look around the equator, you'll see that for each object, even though the density varies a lot from object to object, the polygon sizes in the center here are about the same. And this can be useful if you're doing things like uh, heavy modification, either through sculpting tools or even just uh, deforms and that sort of thing, um, over, over your entire model. In, in cases like that, you really uh, want uh, good density, good amount of density everywhere. Um, and in fact, you may even want to control the minimum, something we haven't touched on yet. Uh, you notice that small sphere is very polygonated, but by cranking that minimum up to 16, now when I regenerate, it has a reasonable density, not something that's uh, terribly faceted. So that, that, that covers the three methods. Um, 
And then we need to go beyond that because that's not always going to do it for you. Quite often, you, you're going to want to get in there and individually vary the density of objects. Uh, it's very hard to predict exactly how <clears throat> you guys might want to use something in a model, so we've given you that flexibility to, uh, to vary it locally. So in order to do that, let's go back to the uh, variable size modulated. And let's say we want to take this center sphere and make it denser uh, essentially override with those uh, global settings that Grubato uh, is imposing on the uh, on the mesh generation. Very simple, all we have to do is select it and you'll see that uh, over in the object panel, um, <clears throat> not surprisingly because uh, it is our key object that its density is global density value is 32 but now I'm going to check this checkbox and that allows me to override that value. There's that 32 that Grobata would set it to if left, if, if left on its own. In fact, I can click on that and, and set it to 32. Um, but just to give me an idea of where, uh, around what range uh, I'm working. But uh, let's say I want to have it much denser than the rest of the model. All I have to do is, now that I have that checkbox checked, I can set a new value and, and generate the mesh. And there you can see, indeed, it's considerably denser. Um, the uh, other two objects are following the rules, if you will, of Grobata while uh, this object with its override set is, is living by its own rules. And of course you can continue to tweak that as much as you want. Uh, you'll notice it drops out of uh, mesh preview when I adjust that value, but uh, no big deal. You just uh, generate the mesh again. And so that's uh, you know what, what I want. I want that uh, relative difference in density. But uh, that may not be the end of it, because what about the overall density? Maybe I want the entire thing, especially after playing with it a little, maybe trying it out in another app. Uh, I want the overall density to be lower or higher while still maintaining that uh, relative difference in density that I've set up. Well, fortunately, we can do that. You just click, check on that checkbox that tells Grobata you want it to scale the overrides at the same time you change the global scale. So I check that box, and now I'm increasing the global scale. Uh, and that will affect the, all of the objects that don't have overrides, but it will also affect the object that does have an override, scaling its value. Again, keeping it, as you see, it still has a higher relative density uh, than anything else in the scene. And you'll, in fact, you'll notice as I move this slider, the slider in the object panel, and the values in the object panel change as well. So you can see it is dynamically updating, and that would be happening with any overrides that you have. So we refresh the mesh again with a much lower density, but still our middle object uh, relatively has higher density. So between all those things, the, uh, the individual object control, uh, the various methods of distributing density, and this ability to scale everything together, including the overrides, uh, it gives you just about everything uh, you need to get uh, density tweaked exactly the way you want it.